and it was never easy. I quit, especially when I went to Boston in college. I quit like three times. I'm like, I'm out of here. This is too much. Wow. This is too hard. The co the, my coach was crazy. He's my boy now, but he was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I was in Boston. It was cold. I had to go to school. I had to do study. I had to do weights. Uh, but everything prepared you to, to for life. Uh, but just right. yeah, patient and, and, and being positive helped me out big time. Please help me welcome to the Power Player Mastermind, Mr. JJ Berea. <laughs> Boom! Dude, how about this, man? How about this? Okay, Cassidy, help me with the uh, screen, by the way, okay? Dude, what, what this dude has accomplished in his life, because he said, he said, when you live, he said, when you're from Puerto Rico, dude, everyone competes for a point, for, for a starting point guard position, by the way, okay? <laughs> He's like, this is a baseball country. Dude, thank you for spending time with us today. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the invite. Welcome to, to Puerto Rico. This is my home. I do anything for this island, for my people. Uh, so hope you guys enjoy it and thanks for the for the invite. You got it, brother. Thank you. Okay, all right. We can have a seat. Thank you guys so much, man. I love this. This is a this was this is such a cool moment. Um, I may tell the backstory later of how we got JJ Bray in the house to spend time with us because it's a pretty awesome story. Um, this dude has been unbelievable to work with, to communicate with. He has a huge heart. I can tell that he's doing everything he can to give back to Puerto Rico uh, constantly. Dude, here's one, th here's one question I have before we kick it off, before I jump to your story and some other stuff. Um, did you always know that you would be the J.J. Berea that you were today? I'm talking like five years old, 10 years old, 12 years old. No, ne never. I, I played uh, and I enjoyed uh, everything I did growing up as a kid, but I, I always wanted to get to the next level at any sport. I played all the sports. At a school, I wanted to make it to the next level at school, but I never knew I was going to make it to, to the NBA or I had a chance at the NBA until almost like the year before I made it. Wow. So I was just enjoying the ride and taking a step by step, and, and it happened. Yes, it did, bro. It really happened too, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, what was, what was, what, what's your story? What, 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 what were you like as a kid, man? How, what, what, what does that look like over the last. I don't know, you're 37? 37. Yeah. So I got two older brothers. Uh, it was three, three boys at the house. My parents, uh, my mom is a professor, a co uh, volleyball coach and tennis coach. <clears throat> my dad is an engineer. My dad is an engineer. Uh, he was a swimmer. So my dad is my, my insurance. My dad is my everything. Yeah. My best friend. And my mom is my coach, I call her. Uh, my, and two older brothers. So when I grew up, I was in diapers. I was already in tennis courts and basketball courts and baseball fields, uh, swimming. So wow. I grew up. I was an uh, active kid. Uh, I was friends with everybody. Uh, all my best friends, so we got like 15, a, gr a group chat of like 50 to 20 friends from when we were five years old. We're best, still best friends to this day. Uh, and I just... You know, I love sports. Uh, I played tennis. I was really good at tennis. I was number one in my age in Puerto Rico. Wow. But it was by myself. Mm. Uh, so when I got to 14, 15, volleyball uh, and basketball were so much fun because we were traveling with teams, with my friends. So I kind of let tennis go. Uh, in tennis, I had to fly to, to the States by myself, fly, uh, drive to San Juan by myself. And I was got a little... A little boring, so I, I let that go and I, I kept playing basketball. But active kid, uh, okay in school. I didn't like to study, but I find my way around to to get a B or an A. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it. 
I love it. Yeah. I love it. So when you look back and you think about, okay, coming from what you came from and what you've accomplished and what you've done, what advice would you give to others that are really chasing their dreams? They're trying to do something big. They don't see it yet either, maybe, but they still want it one day. I think uh, for me it was huge uh, only hearing the positive people. Like I heard it my whole life, it was, no, he's too small or he's not going to be able to make it to the next level or whatever. My dad was super, always super positive. I end the games and he's, he's I, I, I could play it awful and he's going to find one good thing to say about the game. Wow. Uh, and just being patient. I think my, my older brother was telling me just just be patient. I was always taking it step by step. Uh, when I was eight years old, uh, I had problems in my uh, in my town in Puerto Rico because they wanted me to play and and ten years old or in twelve years old because I was so good at eight. And my parents and I, no, he's gonna play his always his age. We're not gonna ever move him up. He's always gonna play his age, and then they uh, no. But when I have a, a rule. Uh, he could only score six points a game when he was eight years old. Oh. So they told me I could only score eight, uh, eight, uh, six points a game. And my dad was like, perfect. That's fine. He'll, he'll learn how to, how to make it, uh, his teammates better. Yeah. So that's what happened. When I got to, to 14, they moved it up to 16 points a game. So I scored like 10 in the first half. And then I, I leave the six to the last two minutes. <laughs> uh, but it made me... It made me every uh, everything that happened in my, in my life. Uh, I think it, for a reason. It made me like when I got to the NBA, I knew how to how to drive to the paint and get the ball to Dirk, and it was an easy assist. You know, yeah, no doubt. It, came, it came natural to me. <laughs> but yeah, just be patient. Uh, super positive guy. Uh, I told when I talked to the kids, I was like, and it was never easy. I quit. Especially when I went to Boston in college, I quit like three times. I'm like, I'm out of here. This is too much. Wow. This is too hard. The co the, my coach was crazy. He's my boy now, but he was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I was in Boston. It was cold. I had to go to school. I had to do study. I had to do weights. Uh, but everything prepared you to, to for life. Uh, but just right. yeah, patient and, and, and being positive helped me out big time. Yeah. And, and what did that do for your internal drive when they're like holding you back like that and you can't go do what you want to do yeah. and they're holding you back how, how did those moments in your life play into your trajectory and and help the drive that you have yeah no question i, I just tried uh okay i can't do this but i'm going to show them i'm still going to win without being able to do this uh and my teammates were loving it because i was handing them the ball like the whole game yeah. uh, but yeah uh my my oldest brother and my mom, I think they're the most competitive people I've met in my life. Wow. My older brother is crazy. Like, <laughs> he, he should have kept playing basketball, but he decided to play volleyball. He played volleyball. He's an engineer, but he played volleyball for 13 years in, in the pro league here in Puerto Rico. Wow. He was a setter. But he playing PlayStation. He's five years older than me. PlayStation at the house, one-on-one -on -one in the backyard. I never beat him. Uh, anytime we walk by the hallway at the same time, he's punching me against the wall. <laughs> uh, if I beat him in PlayStation, I, I better not say anything. <laughs> you can see, super, uh, uh, super skilled. And my mom, as a coach, I grew up watching her coach. And she was, she gets all red and screaming and, <laughs> and this and that. So they're super competitive. So I got, uh, I got lucky. I got the competitive side from my mom and I got the patience and calm from my dad. And super positive for my dad. So I got a, a good in, in between. Yeah. 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 And you have to have, I mean, sure, there's a lot of those moments along the way where you had to really be focused and have some patience. And you were, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, what, what's, what's an example of a like extremely big moment that you were put in that you had to rise to the occasion and use the competitive drive, but also the like mental clarity and focus and patience, you know? Yeah. So my first. I had a lot of moments uh, growing up, uh, but my first, the shot that I think gave me like the, the, the mm. play that gave me the confidence to think I, I could make it and, and keep playing basketball was in 2006. It was my first game with the Puerto Rico national team, the big team. Uh, I still wasn't, I'm trying to make it to the NBA, it's that summer. 
We go to Colombia for the Central American Games. I come back from summer league from the NBA. I land in San Juan, and right I land, I, I go to Colombia with the team. No practice, no nothing. Wow. Went to the Central American Games. I'm coming off the bench uh, because I never practiced. I just came off the bench. First time with the team. We're playing, we're winning, we're winning. We partying every night. So it, was, uh, it was fun. I was 22. It was fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got uh, all the energy in the world. Uh, so we make it to the finals. Uh, and Panama was the favorite team. Because we, we, we had a, the A team from the Puerto Rico team was uh, somewhere else. I think it was in China. They took like a B team to the Central American Games. It's a tight game with 13 seconds left. And the coach uh, calls a timeout. And he gives me the ball. He's like, Jay, you got the ball. When he, I remember to this day, he's like, when it's five seconds left, you do whatever you want. Wow. But you got to wait till five seconds. So I come down and it's packed. Uh, every sport is watching the game. It's the last game of the Central American Games in Colombia. I five seconds left. I take two dribbles left. A big guy comes. I hesitate. I, I take a step back left, and I shoot it, and it's all net at the buzzer. Boom. And from there on, I'm telling you, from that game on, I left there. I went to training camp with the Mavericks. I made the NBA, and then I just I took off. <laughs> So with that one one opportunity, one shot could change could change everything. Yeah. yeah. Man, what were you thinking that moment? I got a few questions that came out of that because that's such a cool moment, it's such a sh cool story to share. Yeah. When you're coming out and, and 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 you know you're gonna have the ball and you know you're gonna have the shot, what was playing in there? Oh man, I, I for me that's the most fun ever, you know. Uh, and when I was when you're that young, like you're not really like right right now. I think I'll be a little bit more hesitate than. When you're young, you just, I, I knew I was faster than, than all those guys, so I was, I knew if uh, my go-to shot, if I need a buzzer beater, if I got I gotta go left. I gotta go left. Right, I go to the lane or to pass the ball. Well, when I wanna shoot a jump shot, I go left, so I had it in my head. Mm. Okay, wait till five seconds, go hard left and just jump up and shoot it. So I had it all planned out and it's tight game, so you miss, you go to overtime, you make it, you, you know, you win, so. That's, that helps a lot. Yeah, did you, uh, do you remember like who was guarding you and, and the move that you made to go left? So, yeah, I remember everything. Okay, cool. <laughs> I love this. I love so, this. When this I, guy good or is this yeah. guy good, by the way? When I'm playing good, when I'm playing good, they usually, uh, they always start with the point guard guarding me, but when I'm playing good, they put a big guy on me. Uh, but I like it even more because they're slower than the, the point guard. Yeah. So, they put like a six, seven guy on me, lanky, super athletic. And I call for a pick and roll, and the big guy comes. So they kind of trap me. So I go back to my left, and I go like this. And just that little thing, they both went like this. As soon as they both went like this, I went, I went left, and then I jumped by myself. And so, awesome. yeah, so I remember that, that shot was pretty. That's big. Yeah. Do you think, because after that shot, yeah. you went back to training camp for the Mavericks. Yeah. Because you went, before I get to that question, because you went undrafted in 06. Undrafted, yeah. So I went to summer league with Golden State first. Then Dallas calls me, and they want me to go to summer league with them too, but after Vegas to Utah. It, it's the same, in, it, it was in July. And I told Dallas, I can only go for three games because I got to go to Colombia with Puerto Rico. And I remember Donnie Nelson uh, to this day was like, yeah, yeah, three games are perfect. We need a point guard. Come on. And it was the best thing that happened to me because I played, I didn't play that good in, it with Golden State in Vegas, but I played really good those three games with Dallas. And then I left, so I couldn't play bad. So, not enough time to play bad. So they, and then Dallas invited me to training camp. And there was one spot, there was one spot for, for four of us. There was four guys, there was a, a four man, a three man, and two point guards. Uh, Avery Johnson was the coach. Yes. So Avery Johnson was undrafted, was small point guard from a small school. Uh, they cut one guy, like in game two, it was nine, back then it was like eight preseason games or something. They cut one guy, then it's three left. Then uh, when there's like three games left in preseason, they cut another one. And then there's only two point guards left, me and the mm -hmm. other. And we're going to the last game of preseason. And in preseason, they always like wait till the last quarter and they take everybody out and they put the, the young guys in. So we're down 14 against Washington and Dallas. 
and they put the our squad in the young guys. And I finished the game with 12 points, eight assists, and we won the game. Wow. And I was like, oh my God, but they didn't say nothing. So the next day we fly to San Antonio for a practice and we get to San Antonio and after practice, uh, the other kid was in, in, the, in the bus. But they still haven't told me anything. Oh. So I'm like, I'm thinking, I don't know. And Avery Johnson brings us into the middle and he goes, hey, everybody, I want to say. And that's the first time ever they call me JJ in my life. J uh, Avery Johnson said, JJ made the team. So everybody congrats. So I was like, oh, that's good. So inside, I was dying inside. But outside, I was oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I get to the hotel. I'm running down the hallway. I'm calling my dad, my parents, my brothers, and all my friends. And, and it was special. And that from then on, it was just working out, getting better. You don't have to go to school. All you do is wake up. <laughs> All you do is wake up, go to, go to the gym for hours, do the same thing at night, and then party a little bit, and do it again the next day. That's right. Yeah. That's cool. Did you, do you think you would have still made the team through training camp, make it with the Mavericks, had you not went to the Central America games and hit that shot at the end? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. That's a great question. You know, I think that shot, I would say, gave me so much confidence for my future. Uh, before that, yeah, I, was, I had it, but I didn't, you know, I didn't really know. But when I made that shot, then everything just, you could go off of it and keep going. So I, you, right. you never know. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, what was it, what was it like playing with this dude, man? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, this guy, the first time, I, I promise you to this day, the first time he saw me, I was like, why are you bringing this kid in? <laughs> But he treated me from day one, he treated me the same way to, to today. That's awesome. Always super cool, funny, joking around, making fun. Uh, but yeah, pick and roll wise, uh, <laughs> pick and roll wise, and he sets a pick. He was really good at picks. He, he, he moves, he finds the angles. Uh, and it was an easy job, you know? If I come off the pick and roll and nobody's there, I gotta be aggressive. If they're guarding me when I get off the pick and roll, I gotta give the ball back to him as quick as I can. Yeah. Because if not, he'll he'll get mad. <laughs> <laughs> he'll let you know. Yeah. But it, he was awesome. Best teammate all time. Wow. Best teammate all time. Good person. Uh, I, I played with a bunch of stars. A bunch of stars. I played in Minnesota with a couple stars in Dallas. Uh, but this guy is team first wow. all the way. Yeah. Wow. He. He'll better win when he playing seven points or whatever. We win, he's happy. He scores 45 and we lose, he's pissed. Wow. He's pissed. pissed. That's yeah, awesome. So. Nobody works harder than him. I heard him and him and Kobe were the hardest worker in the in the NBA. And I, yeah. when I when I got to Dallas and I watched him work, and I watched him work and I watched him work, I'm like, Jesus, this guy. And I was like, if I do 25% of what he does, I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna be good in this league. So yeah, no, but it was it was a it was a great experience. Super competitive too. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Dirk was one bad dude, man. Yeah. 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 So bad. Uh, who was your favorite player to watch growing up? Well, for some reason in Puerto Rico we have WGN uh, Chicago in my cable TV. And, and okay. My All right. Yeah. Polito's from Chicago back there. Okay. We had WGN, so I get to watch. Uh, my dad was trying to turn the TV off, but I, we, me and my brother, we're in bunk beds, and we get to watch uh, Michael Jordan every night. So it was awesome. Uh, Michael, you know, I wanted to eat Wheaties. Uh, I, I wanted to be like Michael Jordan, my mom used to say. Uh, but then when I got older, basketball got really like 15, 16 years old. Uh, Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, Iverson. Yeah. For me, those three mm. were. We're the best. And I got to play against and with all three of those guys. Wow. So was, wow. It was just awesome. I remember in Denver, uh, my second year in Denver, I, I I wasn't playing a lot. I played randomly whenever they threw me in. And they called me, JJ, second quarter, go in. And I run in. And then it's like, uh, who, who I got? Who I got? And the guy goes, oh, you got Iverson. I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Iverson. And Iverson was like a rock star. Yeah. Iverson, after that, after that game, one of my teammates was like, hey, JJ, uh, we're going out tonight. 
And I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want to go out in Denver. It's cold, you know. It's no. I'm not going out. He goes, no, Iverson's picking me up, and we're in. Oh yeah, I'm going. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah. So it's good. So. That's good. Who was the toughest defender against you? Uh, man, defender. I'm an offensive guy, so I don't really think about defense that much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, defender, defender. I basically, I basically on teams. I think uh, that uh, I'm looking for this team that was tough all the time. Teams that switch a lot, that they got like same size guys, mm. like six five guys. They don't have a small guy. They don't have a big guy. Those were the hardest teams because you can the pick and roll was my go to. They're switching. There's not a lot of space, and that was the hardest. But any. Any quick six two six three guy, uh, Drew Holiday from Milwaukee. Drew Holiday, monster, defensively monster. Uh, anytime LeBron James or guys like that switch on me, there's no way you're going by them. They're so strong. They put your hand on you and you, you, you're not moving. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But uh, yeah, hardest guy, hardest guy to to defend. Uh, uh, Steve Nash. He never got tired. He was running around in circles the whole game. <laughs> That's uh, what it looks like to us too, and, by the way. And, yeah. and I was young, and he was still, he was so good. Uh, Derek Rose, the year he won the MVP in 2011, yes. he was so fast and so explosive, it was out of this world. Derek Rose. Wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> Chi Town, loving this. And then, and then later on, Curry, because Curry was just, Curry just special. He always moving out with, without the ball. So I remember a, a quick story. Uh, before the game we're playing in Golden State, they got KD, they got Clay, they got Curry, and I'm starting that day. And coach goes, "Hey, Jay, you're not guarding, you're not guarding Curry. Uh, we're gonna put our best defender on him." And I'm like, "Yo, he's gonna score 35 anyway. <laughs> like me or him?" And I was like, "Better for me. I'll, I'll be better offensively because I don't have to guard him." So, and exactly, he had like 35. I, I played good. I had 20. But wow. I didn't have to play defense on him. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. He's still going to have 35 on us. <laughs> so that was good. Dude can shoot, yeah. man. Yeah. Is, is, he, is he the best shooter ever? Ever, yeah. No doubt. Wow. No doubt. Is there a close second in your mind? Mm -hmm. uh, Ray Allen? Yeah. Ray Allen. Yeah. 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 Does that make sense? Yeah. You're also uh, going to be playing for, coming back to play in Puerto Rico yeah. this season and it's going to be your last season ever once you talk about that why you're doing that because you stopped playing i mean i think your last technical game was 19 but then cuban signed you for the 2020 year yeah so i haven't played uh i played in, in puerto rico last summer a little bit i got hurt my ankle so i played i don't know 20 games we made it to the summer finals it was a new team here in san juan owned wow. by uh, bad bunny oh, <laughs> bad bunny owns the team we got a good partnership going on uh, and it's here in San Juan. So cool. this is the team I, in 2006, when I was in this mess trying to make it to the NBA, I was playing here too. So I used to finish, uh, the college season's over. I'm, I'm in school in Boston. I used to fly uh, Thursday night to San Juan and play, uh, play Friday and Saturday in this league and then fly Sunday back to school. Wow. I did it like wow. six weekends in a row. Uh, but it helped me because I was I went from playing with kids to playing with pros. So when I got to trial for the NBA, I was ready to go. That's so awesome. it's the same team that I'm playing. I'm going to play now, and it's this the basketball here. The the pro league is getting a lot better. All the rappers bought a couple teams. Uh, cool. It's really important for the fans here. We get like in this in the San Juan, we're going to get ten to twelve, fourteen thousand people a game. Wow. And it's crazy. If you know Puerto Ricans packed in the same place, <laughs> drinking and watching basketball, it's gonna be a little intense. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm doing it. You know, I I never got the chance to do it my 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 whole career. Now I'm a little older, but I I got friends all over every team. I get to drive my car around Puerto Rico playing basketball. And just one more time, I had to talk to my wife. I got three kids. We're in Miami now, and I thought I was done. And I, I told her, I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to play one more time. What'd she say? You know, she was like, yeah, no, she's always been awesome. She's always been, you, if she, you do what you got to do. If you want to play, 
Not like, but the season's gonna start in April. I thought it was gonna be the summer, but it's gonna start in April. So that means you're gonna have to stay with the kids for two months by yourself. And she was like, uh, but yeah, if you wanna do it, you gotta do it. Uh, and I was like, I'll send you, I'll send you your mom over here a little bit more. Uh, help. There you go. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm gonna do it one more time, and then that's it. I'm definitely because I want to finish healthy. Like I'm healthy right now. I could, I could play a, 18 holes of golf. I could play tennis. I could run on the beach. I could um, doing. I do bike around Miami now. Uh, so I want to stay healthy. I've seen a lot. I Dirk's going through some tough times right now with his ankle and his hip. So I don't want to. I got my left ankle is kind of shady, so I gotta be careful. But other than that, I want to finish healthy. Yes. We're playing golf today, by the way, 2 o'clock. I know, I know. I got, I'm going to Disney. I'm going, I'm going to Disney till from uh, tonight. I got there tonight, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with the three kids. So I'm going to be more tired than a whole basketball season on, on Tuesday. Yeah. That's good. To talk about, let's talk about family for a second, right? Because your wife is Viviana, Viviana correct? Yeah. She was Miss Universe Puerto Rico. That's a long story, yeah. <laughs> Miss Puerto Rico, 2011. Miss Puerto Rico, 2011, yeah. 2011, yeah. So, uh, no, she came in my life in 2013. I was, I was going through, personal-wise, uh, a little hard time. Uh, I was like, I'm going to be single now. I'm good. I'm going to be single. I'm going to enjoy And then I went on a date with her and... Eight years later, and this is where I'm at now. No, but she's, awesome. she's amazing. She's, she's awesome. We got three kids. We got a 10-year-old boy, a five-year-old girl, and a two-year-old boy. And no more. <laughs> no more. But uh, no, it's been awesome. Uh, she's, you know, and the good thing, she didn't have no clue what basketball was. Like, wow. Yeah, her dad is a boxer. was a boxer. He represented Puerto Rico boxing. And so I'm hoping my kid has my skills. But as big uh, as, as her dad. There you go. Big, big hands, tough. Uh, no, but it's been it's been good. My ten year old's playing basketball, and like my dad is, it did on me. You know, I'm not at this age. It's all about having fun. Like I'm not gonna take him to work out. I'm not gonna take him to train. I'd rather him playing in the park with his boys, or going to games. And, you know, I'll tell I tell his coaches. I told his coaches, I'm like, this has got to be fun. Like practices on a 6 p.m. at night, it's got to be fun for him. Like I don't care if he works hard or not. If you make it fun, he'll he's gonna come back next week. Mm. If you make it boring and they they move the ball and they do a pick over here, they're not gonna want to come back. So he practices. They I used to just play three on three, two on two, backyard. We used to lower the rim so we could dunk. Uh, so, and then later on in life, you know, when they get older, then you pick it up, you get more serious, but especially when you're young, you, it's all about having fun with your, with your team. And then that's going to give you the energy to keep wanting to do it later on in your life. Totally. Yeah. Totally. What's one of the things that you learned, um, from your parents, your mom that you're going to pass on to your kids? My mom, man, my mom is, uh, my mom run everything. She is the... You got big personality. She'll, she can't hold anything inside. She'll <laughs> tell my wife, she, like, quick, long story short, uh, we, me and my wife having breakfast, like a little coffee, and we're talking like about what are we gonna do today, and my mom's like, no! Why are you guys gonna do that? And I'm like, mom, mom. <laughs> <laughs> but she's, she's like that, like, she, she used to coach tennis, coach volleyball, professor at the University of Maya West. Uh, at the same time, we had three kids, uh, so she used to go to school in the morning, make breakfast, go to school, do everything, come back at lunchtime, make dinner. So when we get back from school or from practice, dinner's ready. Then she'll go back to school, coach, practice. Then my dad will come like at five from, from work. Then he'll take two of us to different practices and my mom will go come back and take the other one to a different practice. Uh, Saturday mornings were hectic. <laughs> Saturday mornings, uh, we used to live in Maya West. Maya West is three hours from here, two hours and a half from here. It's furthest away. Saturday mornings, uh, you get in the car, and my mom, my dad, and my grandpa, everybody one, one with each, and we're traveling all over Puerto Rico to different uh, places to play basketball. So, or volleyball, so it was, yeah. my mom was, 
yeah, it was active, work hard. Uh, there's time for everything. I learned that from them. If you plan your day, you could you could go to school, you could study, you could work, you could play basketball, you could you could do it all in one day. But you gotta, like, I remember a bunch of my friends were like, "No, I can't go to practice because we got a test the next day, <laughs> or we got homework the next day." And my dad was like, "No, if you you sign up for this team, you go on for to every practice, to every game, and then you gotta either you study before or you could study after, but you're doing." You sign up, you're finishing it, because sometimes oh, I don't like this team. Or, no, no, you sign up, you're finishing it. Mm. Uh, so I learned all that discipline from my parents was, was huge. I could never miss school, ever. I was a perfect attendee. And my whole life I was like, Dad, I'm, no. Get up, you're going to school. No matter what. I don't care if you're tired. The only way I, you can go is if you can't walk or something. <laughs> but you, yeah. you, you're going to school. So yeah, like a lot of discipline. Uh, and fun, you know, enjoying, enjoying life. You know, I was big and enjoying every moment, every experience. Uh, the locker room with these guys, the traveling, uh, just enjoying everything. Yeah. That's special. And, and you, I'm sure, like super grateful for those. Early on as a kid, you're like, no, no, I, I just, I don't want to always go. You know, I don't want to always show up. Yeah. But how did that help you later in life compared to other people that maybe didn't have that from their parents? Uh, example, in the NBA, uh, practice is at, let's say, 10 a.m. If you show up at 10.01, it's $1,000. Wow. If you show up at 10.02, it's $2,000. So I was never late. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was never late. Uh, discipline, you know, get in the routine, wake up, go straight to the gym, uh, be on wow. time. Uh, and it helped me, you know, be a pro. Help me be a pro, you know. Uh, I was always big on if my teammates are doing good, I'm, if the team's doing good, if we're winning. I, I used to tell the guys, if we win, everybody's getting paid. Everybody. If we lose and you score 20, nobody's getting paid. So I went from winning a championship with Dallas to Minnesota. I went from the best team in the league to the worst team in the league. Mm. So I had a lot to to talk when I got to Minnesota. Uh, but yeah, just discipline and, and working. What was that like in Minnesota? Minnesota, so I went from, from being the young guy in Dallas. I was 28, I think, when we won the championship with 27. And they, they were all old, we had a bad team. And when I get to Minnesota, I was opposite. I'm the oldest, I won a championship. And these guys are 21, 19. They're buying Maseratis in Minnesota in the weather. Uh, so I, I went from, from just learning, learning, learning to not having to talk much to having to talk and, and show these guys and show them about money, show them about insurance, show them about 401k, show them how to save money, uh, defer your money. Uh, they didn't know nothing. So I went from, from learning all these with these guys. I, I played uh, poker and, and cards in the team playing with us. Jerry Stackhouse, Jason Terry, Jason Kidd, Eddie Jones. Uh, and I told them uh, a quick story. We're playing cards and they always needed one more. And I was like, the only way I play, if you guys buy me in, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> but I'm, not, I'm, I'm making the minimum my first year in the NBA. I was like, if you guys, you guys buy me in, I'll play. And that's why I, I learned how to play poker, what? NBA game called Bure. Uh, all type of stuff. So when I got to Minnesota, I was, you know, we were playing our, my game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, it, just stuff like that. No. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. What was the, uh, oh, I'm gonna go back to one, second, one, one thing real quick. You mentioned um, there was a fine for every minute. What if you just missed practice, period? Was I think that it, they give you like a, in the, in the contract, they give you like a rule book and it says it, uh, I think the first time is five or fifteen, and then it, every time it goes up. But you should, yeah. Unless you're like can't get up from your bed, you can't. You can't show. If, even if you're sick, you still gotta show up. They'll check you out and then they'll send you back home. Unless you're practice, Iverson. Practice, yeah. Practice. You didn't need practice. <laughs> what about the uh, talk about? I want to hear about the financial side of the NBA a little bit too, um, maybe some things that we're not aware of or that we don't know that go on behind the scenes. 
just from a financial standpoint? So when I started, the NBA has changed a lot. When I started in 06, they didn't have half of the things we got now. So wow. they always had the pension plan. The pension plan is uh, you could start it, if you play four or five years in the league, it starts, but the max is after 10 years, 10 years in the league, you get the max pension. That starts at age 50, you could start taking that. And then the problem was guys finish playing and then they take that one out because they need the money and then they're broke. So now they started in 2010, they started doing a pre-pension. So a pension was, I retired, I just retired. So in July, I could start getting the pre-pension. And the pre-pension goes from when you retire to the age of 50. Wow. And then you could also add, you could defer, you could add 5% of your checks to, to that amount and you could get it till you get to 50 so you don't have to take the other one out. But this for the, uh, an example, they do, NBA does a lot. You know, they, we do every year, you gotta sit in a place like this and they teach you how to, how to save money, how to, you what financial guys, they give stories, old NBA guys that lost all their money, they come to talk to us. Mm. Uh, you name it, they do it. They, they talk about uh, the insurance, insurance for your kids, trust fund for your kids, the 401k, they match the 401k at 150%. I tell the guys, you'll put everything you can on it. <laughs> yes. Every, uh, on the pre-pension, put everything you can on it. Because you don't need the money while you're playing. They, and for me, I got lucky, you know, my life from playing and now, I'm not gonna change maybe a little bit, but I don't, it's my life's gonna be the same. These guys, uh, a lot of these guys, they live a life when you're in the NBA that when you're done, you gotta tone it down completely and it's, it, that's when it gets really hard. Uh, so then, you know, they got financial guys for, for everything. I got lucky, my situation was, uh, I made a, uh, my professor, my financial professor in, in Northeastern, and an old guy, uh, became really good friends with my dad. And since day one, those two are, have run my money. So I got lucky, I don't have no trust issues, you know. Uh, we've done it, we're saving money since we were, uh, 06. I got a real estate in Puerto Rico, I got like five properties in Puerto Rico. Nice. Airbnb, and then I, I got a, my place in Miami and my place here in Isla Verde. So, Stuff like that. Uh, I got everything: trust fund for the kids, insurance for the kids. Uh, so if 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 you, I got lucky with my dad, but not all, all the NBA guys have my dad. Yep. So I try to, you know, especially when I got to Minnesota. Uh, but these guys, Dirk, Jason Terry, Jay Kidd, helped me. So when I got to Minnesota, I try to help the the young guys out in the same situation. It's good. Yeah. It's good. I got a couple more questions, and then we're gonna open it up for open Q&A in just a second, okay? So be, be ready. Uh, what was it like working with, playing with, working with uh, Mark Cuban? Mark Cuban's awesome. Yeah, Mark Cuban, uh, he, he's a brain. You know, he doesn't stop thinking, always business-wise, always how to make my brand better, how to make money, how to have my players feel this is the best place in the world. Uh, <clears throat> but it got to a point like I, I understood him pretty quick. He wanted to be treated like he was my teammate, so I treated him as my one of my, my one of my boys. Wow. My teammate. We talked during the game. I was like, Mark, uh, how how was the party? Hey, Mark, uh, what are we doing? Uh, this and that. We I treated him like texted him as a as a friend, as a teammate. Like, what do you think about this? And then ideas for to make money. I I saved those for like really important ideas to send him, but uh, he was awesome. Uh, for my foundation here in Puerto Rico, uh, he's, uh, the Mavericks and him, they've been uh, amazing. Wow. Uh, when Hur uh, uh, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico, uh, we were about to start a uh, preseason uh, training camp in Dallas. And Hurricane Maria hits, and I can't get in touch with my family for three days straight. Nobody in Puerto Rico, my wife either. Uh, my boys, nobody. So I'm texting Mark, like, Mark, uh, it's, it's really rough in Puerto Rico right now. Uh, he's like, yeah, you, just, you stick with it. We'll figure it out later. Five days into it, and in Dallas, uh, all the Latinos, all the Puerto Ricans, we collected, you name it, we had it. And then we're like, yeah, so that's good. We collected all this water, medicine, generators, 
everything. We haven't talked to Puerto Rico at all yet. We got to go over water. Like, how are we going to, you know, how are we going to, we can't drive it there. And I was like, oh, yeah, we don't, I'm like, yeah, so why are we collecting it? We don't know how to. So my wife, we're in the car, and my wife goes, this is the fourth day into the, after the hurricane, my wife goes, text Mark. So I'm to let you borrow the team plane. And I'm like, no, no, that's not. Training camp's about to start. That's not ever going to happen. I text him, Mark Cuban. Five minutes later, he goes, check your email. I check my email, and I'm in contact. The pilot, the, the owner of the plane, they're all text, uh, emailing me back. We're ready when you are. So I told everybody uh, that we're collecting stuff. Uh, 12, we had practice that day. I didn't go. 12 p.m., bring everything to the to the private, uh, whatever, the private airport. We packed up, it was uh, five of my boys, my wife. I missed practice. We got on the plane like around three. Uh, I finally, that morning, I talked to my parents on a line line. And I said, I'm gonna be in San Juan at this time at this airport. Get there. We went uh, full, we landed it. When, worst day of my life was when we were about to land in Puerto Rico. We opened up the windows. We were joking the whole way down. As soon as we opened up the windows, it was like a bomb exploded in Puerto Rico. So you couldn't see anything. It was bad. No cars, no anything, everything down. It was bad. And that's when it got real for us. We get to the airport, it was mayhem. People trying to jump in the plane, uh, taking stuff. I finally got to see my parents. And we went empty with like six people down right, and we brought 60 back. 60 people, there's people that needed to go to hospitals, or I brought my grandma back, and my boys got their family out. And then we, we did it all, it was awesome. But the distribution, when we got to Puerto Rico, it wasn't great. It was the first time we did this, uh, everybody wanted stuff. Uh, we, we hit the government up, it wasn't really organized. They were taking the stuff and putting it away instead of just giving it out. So we get back to Dallas, and I told Mark, Hey, thank you, man. Thank you for the plane. It was awesome. I got to. I'm good. I'm ready to go now. He's like, uh, you're not going to go again? And I'm like, what do you mean? No, no. Go back. So we went five times. Wow. With us. Mark, yeah. He gave me the plane. Thank you. He gave me the plane five times. We filled it up five times. Every time with different stuff. Medicine, uh, generators, buckets, uh, brooms. People were making a list in Puerto Rico, and then this, the next four times that we did it, I had it all set up. My foundation, we got a truck from every city that we thought needed the most help, and they met us at the plane, they parked at the plane, and they go from the plane to the truck to the city. So we did it ourselves, the distribution. Smart. So my wife was the number one handling all the operations. Uh, but yeah, so stories like that, Mark has always been, you know, Really quick, uh, awesome, and yeah, it was Mark. It's amazing. It yeah. speaks to the human he is, man. That's no, so no, he, cool. Yeah. That's incredible. And just about a play for a guy like that, you know, and, and even. Fiery competitor. He, yeah. He, he loves it. This is his family. He loves the Mavericks. Uh, yeah. You can tell he has a serious passion and love uh, yeah. for the too game much. and for yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's incredible. Can't even imagine. All right, we got about 15 minutes for open Q and A. I saw Landon stand up first. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one. You're gonna love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. One of the best things I ever did was, I actually sent emails to 10 people who I very much trusted. That my dad, um, my grandpa. You know, you look at things like fellow coworkers, previous.